Let's talk about Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. I rate this book as an 8 out of 10. Without spoilers, I thought the beginning did a really good job of introducing the world to the reader. The middle did a great job of expanding on the world and character growth, while the end was... Uh... Okay. If you've read any book in this genre, my only recommendation is going into this without high expectations. More than likely you'll be able to see the twist coming. And if you're like me and hate being able to tell what will happen, you might end up disappointed. But if you're not a seasoned veteran in young adult novels, you have nothing to fear. Just be careful of the romance novels hiding under the dystopian or fantasy banners. Now, for the real review. Let's start with the good. The opening chapter is great. We learn about the unstable state of the world and Alina and Mal's backstories. They're orphans, and that's all we need to know. What happened to their parents? Who cares? The story's moving on with or without you. Just enough is revealed without getting bogged down in unnecessary details. I like the little things, like how Mal calls the Grisha witches, giving us an idea of how the common people see them and how they actually want to be seen when he's corrected. And that's all for the good. Shadow and Bone started off strong, but by the end it was the bad that stood out to me more. Plus I think it's more interesting to talk about the bad stuff in a book than the good. I think that if you read a book, that the good things in a book should stand out on their own. I don't think I should have to point them out one by one. Now let's start with Alina's letters to Mel. It was such a major plot point, but the way it was resolved left a lot to be desired. Mal's excuse for not getting the letters was because his unit wasn't in contact with the regiment anymore. They were apparently too busy tracking Morozova's herd to stop for mail. But Alina was sending him letters before the Darkling had the idea to go after the herd. The letters were the base of Alina's character growth, but the whole thing is played off as a simple misunderstanding. And, oh, I never considered a soldier constantly moving from place to place just didn't get my letters. All is forgiven. Second, Bagra and the plot twist. The reveal is fine as it is, but the way it was done, however... An old woman you don't like, who spends all her time berating you, yelling at you, or admitting you're not completely awful once the leap year, pulls you aside and without any proof tells you that the Darkling is evil, wants to mind control you, and control the fold. Oh, and she also happens to be his mother. You have no reason to suspect the Darkling or believe anything she says up until this point. So of course the next best step is to abandon your new life and leap headfirst into the closest wagon to escape. Because that makes sense. To prove she's his mother, Bagra creates darkness. The problem is, this proves nothing. Not once is it stated that the Darkling is the only one who can create darkness. It's implied that it's rare, but why wouldn't the castle where the strongest Grisha train younger Grisha to fight and control their power, not have another dark Grisha on reserve? Even with the Darkling faking his death, it's not stated that he was the first Darkling. It's stated that a Darkling created the Fold, but if a Darkling created the Fold, then there were Darklings before him, right? It doesn't say THE Darkling created the Fold or the first Darkling created the fold. It's just a Darkling, which means there could have been Darklings before him. Wasn't it at least a little suspicious that Bagra paid for her escape before Alina even agreed to leave? Other than Bagra's word, there was no evidence of the stag being capable of mind control. I felt like Bagra could have been replaced with the fighting teacher or her friends and Alina still would have believed them. No questions asked. I know there were hints earlier on, but there had to be a better way to do that. All I wanted was a scene of Alina not immediately believing her and going to the library to research, to do some research for herself and maybe finding out something that was suspicious or something that didn't add up with the Darkling. That's all I wanted. I wanted her to not immediately believe Bagra. I wanted her to, for there to be evidence that this was true other than Bagra saying it was. I, I really felt like Bagra could have been replaced with, with anyone. Even, even a gardener or something just walks up to her and is like, hey, the Darkling's evil. You gotta leave. I already paid for your passage. Don't, don't question it. I already paid for it. Just go. And she's like, is he evil? Yes, he's evil. Go. And then she's like, well, all right, if you say so, I'll just, I'll dip. And I just felt like Bagra could have been anyone, anyone in the book. The reveal didn't play to Bagra's character because if she could have been replaced by anyone and the reveal still would have happened the exact same way, nothing would have changed. I'm saying her character didn't add anything to the reveal. Like the gardener could have come up to Alina and be like, hey, I'm a dark Grisha and that's it. <laughs> and then she leaves. Nothing would have changed. I just wanted something. Maybe, maybe she she reads about the the stag, right? And and like things aren't adding up. Like the stag has barely anything about it, and maybe she finds an old book, and it's like the stag can be used for mind control. She doesn't even have to confront the darkling. I just want wanted her to find some evidence for herself that this is true. She didn't, and here we are. So, and then there was the worst offender. 
the conversation between Alina and the Darkling, where he sentences Mal to be executed. So, picture this. Our heroes are captured. Alina is wearing the mind control necklace, and the Darkling has basically won. So what does he do with his victory? He takes a gun, loads it up with plot bullets, and shoots himself in the head. Pages 326 and 327 contain the most nonsensical villain move that I've ever seen. And I've read a lot of young adult books. Well, yes, the most nonsensical. So Alina says she won't fight him as long as he keeps Mal alive. She even goes as far as to kiss him to show how far she was willing to go. That's all the Darkling had to do. Keep the love interest alive and the world is his. Sounds simple enough. Wait, what do you mean he decided to have Mal executed? What kind of idiot? Yeah, fine. The heroes had to win in the end, but way to make your villain look incompetent. Earlier, Elena reminds the Darkling that Mal is best tracker, the only one who could find the magic stag, playing on his greed for powerful things. Still, he throws Mal away like he's yesterday's trash. Seriously, why didn't, why didn't he just take Alina's necklace off and watch her stroll away with Mal while he was at it? That would basically be the same thing. Just take the necklace off, watch her stroll away, because that's basically what he did. He had the world in his hands, decided, nah, we need to extend this conflict. So an argument could be made that the Darkling was jealous of Alina's love for Mal. But, but then which is it? Is he jealous or greedy? Because in the situation they were in, he can't be both, because it doesn't work. It's like the Darkling flip-flopped. Alina was like, hey, Mal's best tracker. You gotta keep him alive. And then only a few pages later, the Darkling's like, nah, execute him. What? What's the, what was the point of bringing up his, his greedy aspects at all if he's just going to ignore them a few pages later? That was exactly what happened. Okay, despite this book's flaws and the lackluster ending, I still rated it as an 8 out of 10 because the first two thirds of the book are good enough that they don't deserve to be dragged down. The mediocre end doesn't drag it down too much. I really enjoyed the first two halves of the book. I really did. I liked seeing Alina training and I liked how the book compared her life as basically a, a peasant to the royal life that she suddenly was thrown into. I like seeing the difference. It's just the end kind of brought the whole thing down for me. So it was, I didn't want to give the book a super low rating because it didn't deserve that rating, but it didn't deserve a really high rating either. So that's why I went with 8 out of 10. Minus two points for the end. I don't think the whole book deserves to go down with the ship just because the end was the end. I think that's gonna be it for me. All you had to do was keep Mal alive. Just keep the boy alive and you win. No one but Alina can oppose you and you have her trapped and shackled to you. And you just throw that away, I guess, for the lulls? I think this is long enough already. See you guys next time and thanks for watching.